So this is my idea for a Terminator sequel. James Cameron, listen up. It's actually more of a reboot because it will take place probably shortly after Terminator 2. So the Terminators obviously have human form, so they must have been designed based on actual human subjects that the Terminators had captured, yeah. and scanned, and they created these bodies based on these dudes. What if one of these guys escaped? That man would be Arnold Schwarzenegger. He fights with the Resistance, he gets old and grizzled, and then eventually he goes back in time to help Sarah and John Connor out against the latest Terminator threat. Mm -hmm. They see him and they think... He's a Terminator coming to get him. Again. But he's like, I'm not a Terminator. Look I'm, at me, I bleed. I'm Louis R Revelson. <laughs> That's a good German name. And he's also the exact opposite personality-wise of a Terminator. He's like gregarious. He tells jokes. <laughs> he, he cries at things. The whole facial masking thing. They can take young Schwarzenegger and make a big burly dude mm -hmm. do the facial mask and make him look like young Schwarzenegger. So old Schwarzenegger has to fight young Schwarzenegger. Well done. James Cameron, give me a call. Why hasn't he my, called yet? I don't know. Come on, Cameron. And I can tell you about my prequel to The Abyss that I'm working on. You don't have a prequel I, I to have, The Abyss. I've never seen The Abyss. I... Liar! I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good, it might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. You may be wondering why Craig is sitting in my chair. It's because he's hosting the show this week. Last episode, I gave him a challenge. We used this Cineplexity board game to help pick our movie. You take two cards, you match them up, and then you find a movie that embodies that combination of things. What are the cards, Craig? We have a saint, a samurai, or a single parent breaking the law. Are you familiar with what is known as the Bader-Meinhof phenomenon? I know those words, but I couldn't tell you what they mean. Well, you'll be hearing a lot about it in the upcoming weeks, because that's what it's all about. Where you hear about something that you've never heard of before, something obscure, and then for some reason it keeps popping up in conversation. Oh, is that what that is? Yes. Yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. When I first heard someone use that expression, I heard it like eight more times. Oh. Same thing with Elephant in the Room. That's what happened with me. Last winter I saw a still from the movie, and it looked like some schlocky 60s horror movie. But over the following weeks and months, I kept hearing about the movie, so it was almost like the movie was stalking me. And it turns out that there is indeed a single parent in it. And he breaks the law in really, really bad ways. The universe obviously wants me to see this movie, and I want to take you along for the ride. With the old French horror movie, Eyes Without a Face. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at the enthusiasm on his face. <laughs> That's more like it. Here you go. Have you ever seen this movie? Nope. Good. The movie stars Pierre Brasseur from Children of Paradise. Ooh, I like that yeah. guy. And Alita Valley from The Third Man. Eyes Without a Face was released in 1960 to much controversy and near universal disdain. One critic in England was nearly fired for giving the movie a positive review. At the Edinburgh Film Festival, seven audience members fainted, prompting director Georges Franju to comment, now I know why Scotsmen wear skirts. Oh, yeah. wow. I think I'm going to be glued to the edge of my seat. <laughs> oh, yes. I've given you eyes without a face. I'm also going to give you a face without eyes. Oh, it's a crazy skeleton. It's a coyote skeleton. <laughs> oh, good boy. Who's a good boy? Don't make it look adorable. I killed that with my bare hands. No, you didn't. This coyote died of natural death. <laughs> yes, it did. Venez avec nous à le grand canapé de cuir pour le classique de cinéma français, Les yeux sans visage. Aidez-moi, les yeux! Wake up. Mm. Don't be a Scotsman. Oh. A woman drives an ugly car through the desolate French countryside. That's one of those dummies that people put in their car so they can use the carpool lane. <laughs> those were the guys from Wages of Fear. <laughs> they had to take a detour through this movie. The design of this car seems to defy form and function. <laughs> it turns out she's just off on an errand, dumping a body in a river. Au revoir! Dr. Genessier is giving a lecture on revolutionary medical techniques, where you take a body part from one person and graft it onto another person's body. 
Il s'agit donc pour nous de modifier biologiquement la nature de l'organisme. L'air. <rire> L'air. <rire> the police fish the dead body out of the river. De plus, tout n'est pas parfaitement clair. This is a cop nowhere close to the edge. <laughs> Kilometers from the edge. <laughs> And they call in Dr. Genessier to identify it, since his daughter is missing. And yep, it looks just like her, because the woman has no face. Turns out it's not his daughter. Dr. Genessier has been killing women. Christiane is still alive. And she's got no face. And he's been trying to give her a new face by kidnapping young girls and stealing their face and grafting their face onto her face. Regardez-moi. Uh, no, no, no. Don't regardez-moi. <laughs> They just need to get her a series of masks that, you know, show different emotions. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy right now. One second, please. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> At the supposed funeral for the doctor's supposedly dead daughter, we meet her fiancé, Jacques, and Louise, the doctor's assistant, who was the person in the car dumping the body in the river. So how many Scotsmen do you think have fainted so far in the movie? Do you think like, uh, like two? two? Between one and two. Okay. Oh, it's in France. <laughs> I was wondering why they're, they were talking that crazy gobbledygook. Louise goes out on the town to find another victim, and boy does she find one. A young student who needs a room, Louise says, I have just the room and I'll take you there. She drives her through the desolate road. <laughs> Now we just have to hop this train for three days, and then we'll be at your new room. To the imposing villa of Dr. Genessier. She knows something flaky's going on, but she goes inside anyway. She meets the doctor, who's all scowls. Who just gets right down to business. <coughs> He's gonna steal her face, man! They drag Edna down to the laboratory. Should have drugged her down here, so you didn't have to drag her down here. Oh, I was hoping he'd have a candlestick that he could take out and it would spin around. Put... The candle, pick! <laughs> and tie her to a surgical table. It's a good thing I'm hidden behind this glass. Wait a minute. <laughs> Christiane goes down to investigate things in the lab. Time to go freak out the new girl. <laughs> and Edna's beautiful face. Christiane takes off her mask. Here we go. Waking Edna up, and things get bad for Edna. <laughs> I can't take it! Oh, <clears throat> oh McDougal. Tona, fetch me my skirt. <laughs> Dr. Genessier and Louise go to work. Make this more like mashed. Tell jokes. Be very <laughs> wry. Edna is operated on, and her face is removed. Man, are we looking at some business. After the movie's over, we'll be able to do this to someone. Stay away from my face. My face is my bread and butter. You're not touching <laughs> it. And you get to see it all. You may want to turn away from your screen for the next few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Tona, don't look. Do not look. Another pastime of this doctor is collecting dogs, which he does some sort of medical experiments on. Le bacon! Le bacon! He practices the skin grafts on the dogs so he can do it better on the human. ro, -ro La mystère! Scooby-Dieu. <laughs> Why is she helping the doctor do these horrible things? Turns out the doctor gave her a new face when her face had been ripped off somehow. Edna wakes up. I forgot to ask, how much is the rent for the room? <laughs> she knocks out Louise. And she ends up trying to escape. If it hasn't seemed like a horror movie yet, you can tell because she's escaping by running upstairs. Nah. Which leads to predictably tragic results. <laughs> and then they dump a body down to the graveyard. See you around, Edna. We hardly knew you. Good news! The surgery is a success! Christiane has her old face back. She looks still kind of creepy, but at least she could probably go out in public. The doctor says he's going to get her a new identity because she's supposedly dead. Sweet. Sweet. Smile <laughs> like your face is peeling. Smile <laughs> like your tissues revealing my crimes. What could go wrong? Everything. Because upon closer examination, the doctor finds out she's going to reject this new face. Take a look at those pictures. Une semaine après la cicatrisation. Le douzième jour, la nécrose. Vingtième jour. And 28 days later, she's a zombie. Looks like Christiane's going back to her old ugly self. Luckily, they didn't throw out that mask. I remember this, huh? Remember this fun thing? Yeah. She confesses to Louise that she just wants to die. Despondent, Christiane calls Jacques just to hear his voice. Hello? Jacques. Louise charges into the room and says, Christian! And then they hang up the phone. But Jacques heard it all. 
There's something fishy going on with that doctor, he says. He goes down to talk to the police. So the police decide to set up a little sting operation. They take this young girl who was accused of shoplifting, threaten her with prison, and say, well, you could get out of it if maybe you do a little favor for us. They send her into the clinic on some bogus malady. You suffer beaucoup. Oui. I think his bedside manner can best be described as menacing. <laughs> I'm only happy when I'm stealing faces and cutting into dogs. <laughs> She's discharged, but she's intercepted by Louise in the ugly car and captured. She's on a surgical table. And the cops show up, but he's got everything figured out. They're not going to know his secret because he's smart. Never mind. We'll go. Jacques shows up and he's like, I'm sorry, guys. I messed up. And everybody leaves. Scream, you fool. Come on, let out a good piercing scream. Don't let Mia Farrow scare you. The doctor goes back to do his thing, but what he doesn't know is Christian has set the girl free. She kills Louise. Oh, oh right in the pearls. <laughs> she decides to free all the dogs. Unfortunately for the doctor, he runs into the dogs while they're running out. They get him on the ground and they rip him apart. Woof, woof, j'accuse. And the dogs escaped into the hillside. It was the dawn of the planet of the dogs. Whoa! <laughs> His face has been eaten off by dogs. As you sow, so shall you reap. Or be have, or ripped, actually. <laughs> Eyes without a face. Or as I like to call it, me without my lunch. <laughs> it got pretty gnarly at times, Craig. Yeah. This movie came out within a year of two other very controversial horror movies. Psycho and the Michael Powell film Peeping Tom. Oh, yeah. And all three of those movies, they just like jump right over the edge of what you could do in a horror movie. There are basically two types of horror movies. There's the horror of fantasy. Oh, my God, there's a monster. Yeah. Oh, you're being pursued by ghosts. And then there's the horror of reality, like, I can't believe that this horrible thing is happening to a person. And yes. This movie, obviously, is that. And this film is so slow-paced. It's not exactly pulse-pounding. No. But the horror is just these things are happening and they can't be stopped. When she did temporarily have a new face, just looking at that face was more repulsive than looking at her with a mask on. Because I just imagined it starting to peel off or something like that. And of course they weren't going to do that, but... They well, did. Well, they did. We I, saw a little photo essay of her face peeling off. Yeah. And the actress that they cast as that, she did fall into the uncanny valley. It was something just slightly frightening about her. That perfectness of her face just added to the horror of the overall situation. Yeah. He's like a reverse Frankenstein. <laughs> he takes parts from living people and turns them into corpses. But really, this movie, you could say, is almost entirely a reverse horror movie. The Mad Doctor was very mild-mannered. The Igor was very beautiful. And they were both doing what they were doing out of love. Yes. His primary objective isn't even for the science, which is another way that he's like Dr. Frankenstein, but Dr. Frankenstein is so repulsed by what he made, he doesn't even talk about how he did it, in the book at least. Though he talks about it in the movie Young Frankenstein, in the book How I Did It. <laughs> Are you familiar with Grand Guignol... Sure. A mixture of the violent and the erotic, usually violence against women on stage. And you can very much see that this is a reaction to that. And usually the Grand Guignol stories would be about some mad doctor who's doing an experiment. And while this is a much more refined and sterile version of the schlocky horror that was being performed in Paris. Well, a lot of times you think you're watching a medical documentary. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. That, and that really enhances the, the horror of the whole thing. Yes. And, so uh, this is like Petit Guignol. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. Look at us. We know French. Get on it, TV tropes. That's another one. Something happened in Wisconsin just a few years before this movie came out that I wonder... The and Ed, that Ed is Gein? Ed Gein. Who, didn't he take the faces off of women and wear them as well? Uh, he took the skin off. He made, a, like, a suit. I don't know that there was a facial component to Ed Gein's fashion sense, but uh, he definitely <laughs> used their skin in ways that are frowned upon. Great horror movies tend to be about something beyond the horror. Rosemary's Baby is about a woman trying to control her own pregnancy. Silence of the Lambs is basically about sexual harassment. Psycho is about fear of sex. So what is this movie really about? The fears that every father has, especially a father with a, with a daughter. They'll be hurt, and then you can't do anything about it. This doctor is cursed by the fact that he can do something about it. His tragic flaw 
is that his knowledge and his expertise turn him into a, a villain. The daughter you may not recognize, but you have seen her in at least one movie. Her name is Edith Scobe. She was in the movie Holy Motors as the actor's driver. And at the end of the movie, the last shot of her is when, after she parks the car, she gets out and she puts on oh, yeah, a mask. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was her. Yeah, and it's a movie that's basically all about movies, and it just closes with, and here's something for the fans. <laughs> Final thoughts? On this movie or on a different movie? On <laughs> this movie, yes. Oh, this movie was all right. Real, real scary, real gross, but thought-provoking. If you like having your thoughts provoked, you should check out our website, welcometothebasementshow.com. You can see all the videos. There's a few essays in there. Also, oh, it's got something else that you should know about. It's got a PayPal button. You can donate money to the show. Don't make us sell our faces. No, we, we don't want to do that again. Because then we'd have to call it Welcome to the Basement without a face mint. <laughs> We've had a lot of viewers click on that PayPal button and donate. They're generous people, and here they are, the supercomputer guy. Hey. Who says, you know what Welcome to the Basement is missing? smell vision Scratch and sniff. You don't want to smell what's going on down here. No. Jake. Wade. Ian. Caleb. Love your show. You make me want to watch more movies. Martin, thanks for the long list of great movies I'll now have to watch. Best regards from Norway. Michael, this completes the payment that I threatened to make when YouTube inexplicably delayed Friday's show. I still am not sure what this is for or what you're supposed to learn from it. Marissa, Matt, I feel as if Craig gets a lot of the attention from your viewers. Let me say that you are just as attractive, if not more so. Meow. Zoe, who we've heard from before, Zoe sent us an essay that she wrote about her first horror film. It's really interesting. And you can check it out here, storybookarchive.wordpress.com. Yes. That's her blog. It's not fan art, it's fan essay. And, and it's really good. And lastly, Kevin, who says, I'm a fresh out of college aspiring film journalist. I hope one day I'll be able to interview you guys and introduce you as the two guys who spent so much time on a couch and by doing so got me off mine and inspired me to do what I love most. Well, Thank you all for donating. Thank you all for watching. And now it's time for Seen It. Mask. <laughs> Abigail Cleveland writes, Dear Matt, The Shawshank Redemption. This movie taught me that there is more to life than meets the eye. You might be living the life one day, and the next reality smacks you in the face. Seen it. Seen it. And I do miss my good friend Annie Dufresne. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's hard not to see this movie if you're anywhere near cable. And it's hard to stop watching it once you start, because it truly is a great movie. It's a modern epic. Mm -hmm. It's got comedy, it's got tragedy, it's got everything. Also, I love how they make the warden look more and more like Henry Kissinger as the movie goes on. <laughs> Shawshank Redemption is a great movie. Much better than its sequel, Shawshank Reloaded. And don't even get me started on Shawshank Revolutions. No, no. It's, they, they should have just left it at one. You, you don't really want to know what's going on down in Zawantaneo. <laughs> Mega Tom Awesome writes, How about one of the funniest touching movies I've ever seen, Harold and Maud? If you want to see it, see it. And if you want to be free, see it. I have no idea how many times I've seen this movie. I think it's one of the best movie romances of all time. Ruth Gordon was like the funny old lady of the, the 1970s. 70s. Yeah. 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 It still feels dangerous after all these years. Very influential of Wes Anderson. Mm hmm. Very. It's, yeah. Rushmore is basically H Harold and Maude yeah. with no Maude. Yes. Well, Bill Murray was Maude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Harold and Maude would have been a lot better if Harold attacked Maude with bees. Michael Moskop writes, A Scanner Darkly. I saw it in an advanced screening and I walked out of the theater with my mind blown. I was totally sure that rotoscoping would make a huge comeback. History has proven me wrong, but the film is still really good. Seen it. Seen it. I think this is my favorite Keanu Reeves performance. Perfect casting of Keanu Reeves. Of just someone who's just slightly burned out, smarter than he looks but making a lot of dumb decisions. It's really, really good. could only be done as a cartoon, considering certain aspects of it, and just how it just makes the entire world seems like it's floating, like you're, mm -hmm. like you're high yourself. Yeah, like you're everyone watching. is on this drug. Yes. Yeah. A gunshot to the head, really. It's, it's, a, it's a trip. A trip. <laughs> Demos Politis. Eight and a half. Seen it. Seen it. The first time I saw this movie, it was probably the mid-90s. It was on a really crappy... VHS, they used to do the subtitles where they were just white subtitles on a black and white movie. Couldn't read half of them. I watched about half the movie and I just like, I couldn't absorb anything. Mm -hmm. But I said to myself, I know this is important and I need to come back to this. 
I need to wait for the technology to catch up <laughs> so I can experience this movie the way it deserves to be. And probably about five years later, I watched it again, and uh, it's great. It's the uh, masterpiece of the maestro, Fellini. You know, you could have spent those five years just learning Italian, Matt. I don't got time for that. <laughs> John King writes, another suggestion and another all-time favorite, Disney's Fantasia. I saw this when it was re-released in the early 90s. It mm-hmm. set at the Oriental Theater in downtown Milwaukee. And I can't believe that there was a time when people looked at it and thought, oh, this is pretentious. Mm-hmm. As exciting and as original as the movie is, I don't think it's possible watching the whole Rite of Spring passage with all the dinosaurs without nodding off just a little bit. I've seen this movie three or four times, and that's always nap time during the movie for me. Well, that's seen it. <laughs> and that's our show. Thank you for joining us for this scary French movie that? that Craig subjected us to. I'm not there yet. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The scary French movie that Craig subjected us to. Well, I guess that's what was on the cards. Say, speaking of cards, you need to give me a Cineplexity challenge. I will. Lay it on me. I'm up for anything. Lots of cards to choose from. I wonder what you got there. You're putting the game away. Does that mean you have my challenge? I do have your challenge. A female lead character, and something is built or destroyed. Challenge accepted. And we hope you will rise to the challenge of joining us for our next episode and finding out what movie I pick. Au revoir! It's the beginning of White Riot by The Clash. <laughs> White Riot, I want to riot, riot. Yeah, same. I don't know. Not, not a music fan. I'm a music fan.